I've been on the stage for four years in different capacities. And many consider me perhaps an expert on hospitality. And that comes for a good reason. You, you met my parents. Um, they didn't introduce themselves very well, but that was my parents. <laughs> and uh, like, I know they're like super sweet and slightly bonkers, but like, they're the most loving, hospitable, incredible people um, and have given me a restaurant to inherit that is known the world over for hospitality. And our dining room table, when I was a kid, was intentional conversation and practicing vulnerability and like, how are we going to serve others today? And like, it was intense stuff. And then in our restaurant, right, we've created this team that is, is known for going above and beyond and doing extraordinary things for both our guests and, and for our staff. And so, yeah, okay, I'm supposed to be good at hospitality. But I have a confession to make. I'm a serial conflict avoider. My wife, who is probably watching this at home with our one-year-old daughter, is sadly nodding vigorously at her screen. <laughs> she knows this. I'm sorry, babe. But I'm working on it, and that's the point of this talk. If I see conflict coming, I cross the street, I avert my gaze, and I look away. Most often, I shove it so far down into a very comfortable place that I can avoid feeling bad about whatever it is that I'm avoiding, and it just goes away magically. It's wonderful. Sometimes, though, I can avoid conflict, even though I'm like really talented at avoiding it. But sometimes it walks right up to my car window and it taps on the glass. You see, in Seattle, we have a super large uh, and sad uh, unsheltered population in our city. And it's not uncommon when you're on a stoplight uh, and waiting for the light to change that someone walks up, taps on your window, uh, and asks for money. And he stands there with his cardboard sign and his unflinching eye contact, and I cannot meet his gaze. I lower my chin to my chest, I go to my safe place, and I tell myself over and over again that he would definitely use my dollar for drugs and not a sandwich. This moment, this is what I hope to learn about today and why I'm so excited to be with you in the audience. I want to learn to raise my chin and let conflict in the face. I want to learn to find hope in that moment rather than fear. I want the courage to embrace whatever change can happen in me and those around me as a result. Why? Because the people who are doing this really well are changing the world. They're at least changing Seattle. I know this because I met this woman recently named Melissa Gehrig. I wish she was one of our speakers today because she has taught me something about hospitality that is invaluable. Melissa runs an organization in Seattle called Vision House. And Vision House has this mission of taking unsheltered families and finding them a safe place to live. This is a woman who has chosen to spend her life in relationships with the same people that I can't even look in the eye. Me, I see a tent city and I look away. She sees a tent city and she walks right up and she says hello. Me, I stick to the safety of my car, my suburb, my fancy restaurant. She, on a daily basis, enters right in to the broken and messy world of the homeless. I avoid, she embraces. She's the one changing Seattle. She's the one actually making a difference, not me with my chin at my chest, ashamed, feeling empty, avoiding. The man is left hungry and unknown. I'm left ashamed. What are we accomplishing? She, she's actually filled with hope. When you talk to her about the homeless in Seattle, she lights up. She's so excited about what they're doing. She actually has hope for our city, and I have none. This thing, this serial desire to look away, 
It's like a virus, and it invades my entire day. My chef shows up, hurt, sad, and frustrated. Look away. My brother, super angry sometimes at a meeting. Ooh, look away. A guest has just spent hundreds of dollars and three and a half hours of their life in my restaurant, and on their face, look away. My wife, pregnant with our second, raising our impossibly stubborn first, on the phone in a fight with her dad. Look away. It, it's not that I don't see their brokenness. It's not that I don't see their hurt and their suffering and their frustration. I'm actually really good at seeing it. I took John Medina's test. I crushed it. But their burden is not what I had planned for my day. My day is full, and it's full of actually really good things. I spend most of my time serving others, investing in others, leading a team. Like I'm, I'm doing good things. But their thing was not on my schedule. And I fear that whatever they're going to bring, it could overwhelm me. I love to be in control, and it's putting me out of control. So I cross the street, I shove it down, and I look away. But I have really good news. And like listening to Anthony earlier and some of the other speakers, I'm better than that. When I think about it, I actually have so much to give. I actually want to give. I want the change to take place in my life, and I actually want to be able to influence positive change on others. And by looking away, that's never going to happen. So I have a cool opportunity. Here I am, standing, terrified, in front of 850 of you, and I can say that I want to commit to you that to this is a year. My wife's like, make it 10. <laughs> this is a year that I want to raise my chin off my chest and stare conflict face to face. Only then, well, I found the ability to change what's in me and have a positive impact on all of those around me. If you're like me, maybe commit to do the same. Lift your chin and look right at it.